Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about some surprising reasons why you might lose sexual interest in your partner and how you can get it back using EFT. My name is Stefan Gonick. I'm an expert EFT practitioner, trainer, and founder of the Soulmate Attraction Academy from EFTalive.com and singletosoulmate.me. Now, there are three main reasons why you might lose sexual interest in your partner, and we're going to talk about those in this video. The first reason is sort of the most obvious and least interesting one. And that is that, you know, if you are losing interest in being with your partner, uh, you will naturally also lose sexual interest in your partner as well. And so if you're losing sexual interest in your partner, you may simply conclude that, oh, I guess I don't really want to be with this person anymore. And, and sometimes that is exactly what's going on. But there's some other, re other things that could be going on that might surprise you, which is what we're really going to talk about in this video. So there's two main kinds of reasons that can cause you to start losing sexual interest in your partner even though you actually really still want to be with your partner. So the I'm going to introduce, introduce the first one by actually sharing a story of my own. Many years ago, I was in a relationship with a woman. we have been together about a year and I suddenly lost sexual interest in her when prior to that, my sexual interest was very strong. And I happened to be in therapy at the time and in my next session with my therapist, I said, well, I think you know, I probably should end my relationship with my girlfriend because you know, I'm not really feeling any sexual interest in her anymore. And then he said something to surprise me. He says, well, Stefan, in my experience, when clients lose interest in their partner, sexual interest in their partner, suddenly, nine times out of ten, it's because they have some unexpressed anger towards their partner. And I was like, hmm? <laughs> and this is particularly surprising to me because I wasn't somebody who got angry much, right? And I was not aware of being angry at her about anything, which is what I said to him, right? And he goes, well, let's just kind of, you know, explore around and see if you can get in touch with anything. And so we did, and I got in touch with this little minor thing. I was like, oh, I've got a little thing there, and oh, it's really a little minor thing here. And then all of a sudden I went, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, there's this one thing that, I, that she did that I am mad about. So now this, is, this predates even the existence of EFT. This is so long ago. Um, so he helped me, you know, kind of work through my anger around that. And, um, and then I ended up talking to her about it, and we worked it all out. And then my sexual interest came flooding back. And I was like, wow, that's really cool. So this could be one of the reasons, you know, things that could be going on for you. One of the reasons why you might have suddenly or fairly suddenly uh, lost sexual interest in your partner or at least felt a big drop in it. So what do you do, you know, how do you handle this with EFT? So the first thing you do is you start tapping on the anger itself by yourself, right? Not talking to your partner. So you say, you know, even though I'm really angry at my partner, so, you know, so-and-so, so for such-and-such, such, the thing that they did, you know. Uh, you know, I deeply, profoundly love and accept myself. Even though I'm really angry at so-and-so because of what she, he or she did, I deeply, profoundly love and accept myself three times in your cry chop point. And then each tapping point, you just keep repeating that. I'm so angry at so-and-so for doing such-and-such. Such. I'm so angry at so-and-so for doing such-and-such. Such. I'm so angry at so-and-so for doing such-and-such. And, such. and just keep, you know, working through all the points, focusing on the feelings. Um, and you might even include because, you know, because I feel betrayed or I feel this or that. And you just keep tapping until the anger comes way down. So it might have started out pretty high, but somewhere between a 7 and 10 out of 10. And you want to keep tapping until it gets down to, you know, 3 or 2 or 1, somewhere like that. And then you're, you're not done there, though, because it's still unresolved between you and your partner. They could do it again, right? It's, so what you need to do then is to then go talk it out with your partner. But, but now you can be talking out from a place where you're not full of anger, right? You've you know, gotten rid of the majority of it. You still feel a little bit enough, you know, a little bit still. And so you can still feel some anger as you're talking to the person, but you don't have to feel like yelling or whatever, right? So you just go, hey, you know, when you did such and such, you know, that made me really feel angry. And it was not okay with me. And you know, I, you know, we need to talk about this. And then you, you, know, you want to work it out. And that's exactly what I did you know, in, with my girlfriend at the time. I did a bunch of you know, non-EFT anger work and got out most of the anger. Then I talked to her and I, you know, about what, I told her what it made me upset and uh, why. And, and she apologized and we worked it out. And like I said, my, my sexual feelings came flooding back. So it was great. All right, so now we're going to talk about uh, a little bit more complicated reason which has to do with around fears of intimacy, okay? So when we get our fears of intimacy get triggered, we start to feel scared and unsafe in our relationship, and then we will 
uh, subconsciously create distance to protect ourselves by shutting down sexually, by losing interest sexually in our partner, because that will create some emotional distance by doing that, and we'll feel safer, we'll feel less scared, right? It's not something we're doing intentionally, it's just something we kind of automatically do subconsciously. So it, this, this only happens, though. So you might think, well, you know, I wasn't feeling like this up in, you know, all, in the beginning of our relationship all the way up until now, and then now suddenly I'm feeling it. And the reason why that might be the case is that our fears around intimacy will tend to only get triggered uh, after we've reached a certain level of intimacy in our relationship. So it could be that you've just been together long enough and shared a lot of really close, intimate experiences, or it could be you're taking your, your relationship to the next level, like you're talking about moving in together, or you are moving in together, or you get engaged, or you get married. Any of these things can really up the intimacy level. And so any fears around intimacy that you have will get triggered and then you may respond in this way. So now, as we're talking about fears around intimacy, there's two kind of subcategories here. The first subcategory is fears of intimacy that came from experiences we had as a child in our family. Because our original experiences of intimacy happened with our, our parents and our siblings, right? That was our, our original kind of, that's the place that we had, uh, whatever, we, whatever past our intimacy in our family is what we had, right? And so these, there's going to be unhealed, painful experiences of childhood that make you scared today as an adult. Typically, the fear subconsciously is that it'll happen again. So whatever painful thing happened as a child will then happen again in your relationship. Not because your partner's doing the same kind of thing, but just as I said before, when you reach a certain level of intimacy in your adult relationship, these childhood fears around intimacy will get triggered and all of a sudden rise up. And then we'll start to feel them. And we may not even be all that consciously aware that, we're, that that's what's going on, but we'll subconsciously react by protecting ourselves, like I said before. So how do we address this particular subcategory? So this, this is the trickiest one of all the different reasons, because what we have to do now is kind of explore our childhood and figure out what it is, right? So, you know, a place to start is to think about, well, what were the most painful kinds of things I experienced in my childhood with my parents and or siblings? So, um, and that's going to be, you know, kind of a good place to start, to start figuring, because, you know, whatever painful thing happened, we're going to be subconsciously afraid of repeating that. So I'll give you a couple examples, just because this can be actually a wide range of things. But one example, for instance, is if you had a parent where you, f you felt a lot of abandonment and or rejection with that parent, um, that can create a fear that you're going to feel abandonment and or rejection with your adult partner, right? So that'd be one example. And then there's sort of the opposite example, where you had a parent who... Uh, was very smothering, right? So, so the first one is a fear of abandonment. That's a very common fear. Uh, another one is a fear of engulfment or fear of, you know, the, where the parent was like too close, too, too in our face, right? Too loving in a way, not giving us space, not allowing us to have boundaries, things like that. So again, as you reach a certain level of intimacy, uh, that fear is going to rise up and you're going to create, you know, protect yourself and create distance by shutting down sexually. Um, it could be something like, uh, you know, if you didn't do what your parent wanted, you know, they got really mad at you, got really angry and started yelling, things like that. Or maybe gave you the silent treatment. It was, again, a kind of a rejecting experience. So it could create a fear around, you know, I have to do whatever my partner wants or, you know, I'm going to get th that kind of painful exp experience again. So it could be a lot of different things. It could be 20 different things. And it could be more than one, right? We don't, we're, we, <laughs> we don't end childhood typically with just one fear around intimacy. We have to end we have more than one. And we're going to typically, ideally, identify all of them and clear them all out. Because these fears of, of intimacy are going to cause us to sabotage a relationship. Even, you know, one way is what we're saying, shutting down sexually, but that's not the only way we can sabotage our relationship. It might cause us to create lots of fights out of the blue, right? Or just to pull away in general, not necessarily sexually, but emotionally. Dip, lots of different ways we can sabotage our relationship. So now the question is, how do we heal this using EFT? So once we've identified, uh, let's say it was a, an abandoning experience, right? Or actually, let's say it's a rejecting one. That's a little bit easier. Um, and so the way we heal this with EFT is we, we, do, we want to heal a few representative example memories of our parent doing that painful thing. And I, I like to do it um, by the principle of first and worst. So first would be the first time you remember them doing it. It doesn't have to be the actual first time, just the youngest you remember it happening. So you want to heal that memory. And then you want to heal... Uh, a couple 
of the worst, most painful times you remember your parent doing it while you're still a child, right? During our formative years, not when you were, you know, growing up as an adult, because you're already fully formed by then, right? Now, when I do this one-on-one -on -one with a client, it typically only takes me uh, healing three memories, sometimes only two, but, you know, lots of times three. If you're doing this on your own, it might take you more memories, you know, to fully heal that fear. So it might take you, you know, three, four, five, six, even, something like that. But you'll, you'll eventually get there. If you, you know, heal example memories of your parent doing that, uh, that painful thing, uh, you'll stop being afraid of it happening now as an adult. All right. Um, now, if you if you don't know how to use EFT to heal a painful memory, I have another video called, you know, how to use or how to heal a painful memory with EFT, or something like that. Just go to my channel on YouTube, and you'll see it there. Um, and then you can use what you learn in that video to heal these painful memories. All right. So this is the most of all of the possible reasons. This is the most complex one. And like I said, you may have to address you know more than one of them. You might have a, you know three or four different uh, fears around intimacy, things like that. Okay, then, then that brings us to the other subcategory of around fears around intimacy. And this doesn't come from childhood. This comes from your partner, your current partner in your current relationship doing something that is, feels painful and feels dangerous, right? It makes you feel unsafe, I should say, really. So it could be a common example of that is they did something that felt like a betrayal. So let's say you, you told your partner a really you know, personal secret that you didn't want your partner to tell anybody, and then he or she did right? So you now feel unsafe, right? I feel, you know, my, my privacy and secrecy was betrayed here, and now I don't feel safe. I don't feel safe telling you more secrets, but I also just don't feel safe with you, period, right? Or it could be, you know, any kind of thing that leaves you feeling unsafe with your partner. And as long as you're feeling kind of unsafe and therefore scared, um, even if you really love your partner, uh, subconsciously, you will create, you know, try and protect yourself by creating distance by shutting down sexually, by losing interest, sexual interest in your partner. And that may not be the only response. You may also respond in other ways that all have to do with either self-protection or overreactivity, right? Which over time left unaddressed can really ruin your relationship. So uh, how do we address that? So again, it's a two-part process. So with e the first part is we use EFT to clear out all of our feelings around what the, our partner did. Right, so you might feel angry about what he or she did. You might feel scared that you can do it again. You might feel really hurt because you feel betrayed. Uh, you might feel shame feelings within yourself that your partner did that to you. So you want to go, you know, even though I'm having, and then you name all the feelings, I deeply and profoundly love and accept myself three times in your cry child point. And then you just start tapping on all, all the feelings. Uh, you know, you measure how intense this whole thing is. Then you just keep tapping your feelings until the intensity comes down, 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 down most of the way, right? So you're down to ideally around two or less. But then, like with the anger example, you need to work it out with your partner. You need to then go to your partner and talk this out and say, hey, you know, when you did such and such, that made me feel really unsafe. It made me feel like I can't trust you as much anymore. And then and I went to this self-protection place. And, and I don't like that. I don't want to be feeling unsafe around you or feeling like I have to protect myself with you. So we need to, we need to work this out. Now, you know, you need to get to resolution on this because otherwise it feels unresolved and you're, it'll leave you scared that it can happen again. Unfortunately, sometimes when you try and talk this thing out with your partner, uh, unfortunately it's a common thing when we try and talk, you know, challenging things out with our partner that we, we end up feeling worse rather than better, right? If that happens, then you really want to do some couples counseling to address this particular thing. doesn't mean you have to do many months of couples counseling, just, just enough to work through this thing because left unresolved, uh, it will create further and further distance over time. And it can end up sabotaging and ruining an otherwise great relationship. This is the kind of stuff that really, you know, causes a lot of relationships to fail. Um, but the good thing is, is that if you do a bunch of tapping on the intense feelings that you're having about what your partner did, it'll actually make it much more likely that you'll be able to talk it out because you won't be in a supercharged up place emotionally. Right. When, usually, the thing that tends to make it not go well when you try and talk something out with your partner is that you're you're so upset that you say things in ways that the other person feels you know attacked by, and and then they say things that you overreact to and back and forth, and then you end up feeling worse instead of better. So, uh, anyway, 
you, it's really important to, to address this and uh, to resolve it so that you can have a really wonderful relationship going forward. All right, so I hope this video was helpful. If it was, it would really help me and people to find this video. If you just take a second to click on that like button. And I also have these wonderful resources at my two websites. At EFTalive.com, you can get my free ebook, uh, Change Your Beliefs, Change Your Life Using the Magic of EFT which teaches you how to use EFT to change negative beliefs into positive ones, which is a, a very powerful thing you can do for your life. And, and then you also get my newsletter every, other, every two weeks that has all these different practical ways of using EFT to enhance your life. And then on my singletosoulmate.me website, I know it says single to soulmate, but even though you're in a relationship, uh, I have some really useful resources there. I have this free mini course called The Three Secrets to Attracting Amazing Love. And even though you already have your, your love, um, one of the really useful things about it is it, it helps reveal the kinds of things that can mess up an otherwise good relationship. These are the kinds of things that can cause problems when you're looking for love, but they can also cause problems when you're already in a relationship. And it talks about how to heal those to clear all that up. All right? Because again, it's one of these ways that we sabotage our, our relationships without realizing it. So I encourage you to go to my two websites and or get whichever one, get whichever thing you're interested in. So anyway, keep tapping and I'll see you on the next video.